Hello, everyone, and welcome to your linear algebra review on solving systems using LU factorization. Uh, my name is Jason, and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Now, what is LU factorization? Well, the idea is, uh, in this case, we have this system here. We have matrix B times X equals vector C. This is our system. So what LU factorization does is we rewrite what your matrix B is. We rewrite it in terms of two other matrices being multiplied together, a matrix L and a matrix U, where L is a lower triangular matrix. So it looks like in particular this. So there are some numbers in this lower region and then this upper region just has zeros. And U is some upper triangular matrix. Where it looks like, in particular, something like that. Where the upper right triangle has numbers in it, non-zero numbers, possibly. And the lower left region has zeros. So we can rewrite our matrix B in terms of a lower triangular and an upper triangular matrix being multiplied together. Now, why is this particularly useful? I mean, we'll see once we solve this system, um, but it's uh, maybe solving it by hand is kind of tedious, but it's particularly effective uh, for computers. Um, if a computer is able to take a matrix and factor it as a lower and upper triangular matrix, it can then compute this process. It can compute what X is much faster than usual. Having lower and upper triangular matrices makes the, the computation for a computer much faster. So it's not exactly the best method for working by hand. It's kind of tedious. It's kind of long. Um, but it's an important process to know because it's kind of the process a lot of computers can use to solve uh, matrix systems. And I mean, that's sort of the whole point of linear algebra, right? Solving matrix systems. Um, so just being aware of, of this process is very important. So let's go through this process. Let's Let's figure out exactly how do we find this L? How do we find this U? And in fact, the way we can find them uses elementary matrices. Okay, so um, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be starting with B and we're going to try to not get it into reduced row echelon form, but getting it into an upper triangular form. And we're going to be doing this by using elementary matrices, okay? Um, now, the only elementary matrices we are going to use are going to be the ones where we add multiples of one row to another. We don't want to use any swapping row ma elementary matrices, and we don't want to use any scalar multiple row elementary matrices. Okay, we only want to use the ones where we add multiples of one row to another row. Um, basically, the other ones kind of mess up this process. This is the only elementary matrix that, that makes this process uh, very usable. So what we do, we start with our matrix B. Our matrix B, maybe I'll, I'll write it down here. Matrix B, 1, 1, 1, 4, 3, minus 1, 3, 5, 3. And I mean, we just kind of go through the process that we normally do, right? Uh, for finding, for, for reducing a matrix. So what are we going to do here? We want a 0 underneath our 1 in the top left. So we take row 2 minus 4 row 1s. Okay, so it ends up becoming that. Um, but remember, any, any um, uh, elementary row operation can instead be done using an elementary matrix, right? So instead of, of just doing row two minus four row ones, we can find some elementary matrix such that when I multiply by my matrix B, I end up getting my reduced matrix. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what is this elementary matrix that I'm using? So I'm changing my second row. So my first and third rows are going to stay as, as those identities. Because again, all elementary matrices are sort of based off this identity. Um, so my first and third rows are unchanged. My second row, what am I doing with it? I'm taking one of my second row and negative four of my first row and none of my third row. Because again, remember how matrix multiplication works, it's, it's rows by columns. So I want one row two, and I put that in the second column, and I want negative four row ones, so I put that in the first column. Because again, rows times columns. So this is my elementary matrix. This is E1. I'll call it E1.
That's my E1. Okay, so that's just the first step, the first step. What's the second step? So, so we have a zero underneath it. Now we want another zero, right? So starting here now, we want to get another zero uh, in the bottom left position. So we take row three minus three row ones. So row one and row two are unaffected. Row three, I end up getting this, zero, two, zero. Okay. Uh, and again, I can go through this whole process of you know, trying to figure this out. And we end up getting that my second elementary matrix uh, is 100010, zero, 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 uh, negative 301. Right, because I'm taking negative three of row ones and one of row threes. And then we have one more step. Again, I'm trying to get this into upper triangular form. So I want to get a zero in, in this bottom middle position. How do I do that? I take row three plus two row twos. So that becomes zero. This also is zero. Um, and then this is negative 10. And again, I can figure out what my elementary matrix is and my elementary matrix ends up becoming. Um, it, it ends up being uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 1. Again, because I'm taking two row twos and one row three. So these are my three elementary matrices. So if I, I guess I can write it up here. So if I start with my, my matrix B and I end up multiplying by E1, and then I multiply by E2, and then I multiply by E3, right? And the order we do this in is incredibly important, right? I'm starting with B, and I have to multiply by E1 first. So E1 is closest to B. And then I'm multiplying by E2, and then I'm multiplying by E3, okay? So it's sort of, it's written almost backwards, but it has to be written that way because the order you multiply matrices is very important. So when I take B, and I multiply by E1, and then E2, and then E3, I end up getting this upper triangular matrix. Okay? I end up getting that upper triangular matrix. And that upper triangular matrix is going to end up being my U in my LU factorization. Okay, I'm just erasing some stuff so we have a little more room. I have to keep all my elementary matrices for later. Okay, so um, let's try to solve for B real quick. How would we solve for B? Well, we would take this, this big, huge mess here, right? And multiply by the inverse to the other side. So I would end up getting B is E3, E2, E1, inverse, times this guy, which I'm just going to call U. So I'm going to call U this upper triangular matrix here. Okay. Um, so remember how inverses of products of matrices work? We inverse all the elements and we flip the order around. So instead of being E3, E2, E1 inverse, it'll be E1 inverse, E2 inverse, E3 inverse, right? You have to swap the order around, okay? Um, now, we have all of these elementary matrices, E1, E2, E3. What are their inverses? Well, remember, this is what the previous video went over. So if you haven't seen the previous video, check it out. Um, these are all examples of elementary matrices where we, we add multiples of one row to another. And how do we find those inverses? Well, we just negate the, the sort of oddball areas, right? The ones that are sort of out of place, like this negative four and this negative three and this positive two. We negate them all. Okay, so our E1 inverse would look like 1, 0, 0, positive 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Our E2 inverse would look like 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, positive 3, 0, 1. And our E3 inverse would end up looking like a negative 2 there. And actually something very cool, when you multiply these matrices together, and, and I, I, you know, would want you to like actually try it out yourself and multiply these matrices together. But what you end up seeing is that you can basically just smash them together. Um, and so this four that was in this position, you just leave it, the three, you just leave it and the negative two, you just leave it. So you kind of just combine all the, all the matrices together 
into one super matrix. There you go. And look at how this matrix looks. It's lower triangular. So this ends up actually being our L. Is all of these, the inverses of all of these elementary matrices multiplied together. Boom. So there you go. We, we have LU factorized our matrix B using elementary matrices. So, so let me just write it over here. Um, we end up getting that B, B equals L times U, where L and U are these guys. Fantastic. Um, now we can use this to solve our matrix. Okay, now that we have the LU factorization, let me clear up some space. Let's only leave the essentials. So we have our LU factorization. B is this matrix L times this matrix U, where L and U are these two matrices. Now, if we're trying to solve this system, so we're trying to solve BX equals C. Well, we know what B is, right? B is L times U. Okay, so we're gonna solve this in steps. We're gonna work our way from outside in. So this U times X here, this U times X is really just some vector, right? It's just some, some fancy vector. So I'm just gonna call it Y. I'm gonna say u times x equal to some vector y, right? If we were to actually take our vector, our matrix u and multiply by the vector x, whatever it is, we would just get some other vector out of it. I'm just gonna call that y. So if I wanna solve this system, l u x equals c, I need to first solve l y equals c. So this is my first step. It's a two-step process. I need to solve this system, okay? And how do I do that? Well, well, let me let my, my vector y equal, you know, y1, y2, y3. Okay. So I have I have L 1, 0, 0, 4, 1, 0, 3, negative 2, 1, times y1, y2, y3 equals C, which is 1, 6, 4. So what I can actually do here is, is let me rewrite this as a system of equations. So the first row tells me I have one y1 plus zero y2s plus zero y3s equals one. The second row tells me I have four y1s plus y2 equals six. And the third row tells me I have three y1s minus two y2s plus y3 equals four. So actually I already have what y1 is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do substitution. So now that I know what y1 is, I'm gonna sub that into the second equation down here. So I have four times one plus y2 equals six, which if I subtract the four over, I get y2 equals two. So I have y1 equals one, I have y2 equals two. I'm gonna substitute both of those into my third equation, my one down here, my one down here. So I have three times one minus two times two plus y3 equals four. And if I go ahead and solve that for y3, I end up getting that y3 equals five. So the solution to this first step, Ly equals c, is that y equals one, two, five, the vector one, two, five, okay? Okay, so again, that's just the first step. Now I have what the second step would be, is solving this system. Right? Because again, what, what was this y? This y was just the thing that I said equal to ux. It was sort of like a, like a dummy variable. It was just sort of there to hold, hold on for a second, right? So I solved this outer layer, this ly equals c, I solved for what y was, and now I can solve it one more step. I can solve this equation, the ux equals y. Okay? So let me sort of, let me, let me write it out one more time because this is a very important concept. It's incredibly important. Let me clear up a little bit of space. I want to erase all of it. Um, but the idea here is we're trying to solve bx equals c. So what I've done is I've replaced b with l times u. Okay. Now what I did was I, I substituted, I set ux equal to y. That's sort of 
That's what this equation is right up here. So I set um, ux equal to y. So then this equation uh, reduces down to this. L times y equals c. And then I went through the whole process and I solved for what y was. I got y equals 1, 2, 5. And now that I know what y is, I can solve this system up here. I have u times x, which I don't know what x is, I'm just going to call it x1, x2, x3, equals y, which is 1, 2, 5. So once I solve this system, I'll have my x, I'll have my final answer. Okay, I'll have my final answer. So how do I solve this system? I do the exact same process, right? When I, when I was solving the y's, I use substitution. When I'm solving the x's, I'm going to use back substitution. I'm going to solve for x3 first, and then use that to solve for x2, and then use that to solve for x1. As opposed to what I did with the y's, is I solve for y1 first, and then solve y2, and then y3, right? And that's because of the difference between a lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix. It sort of swaps the order that you solve them in. So if I were to write out my system, my, my first equation looks like I have 1x1 plus 1x2 plus 1x3 equals 1. And then I have negative x2s minus 5x3s equals 2. And then I have negative 10x3s equals 5. So I can solve these systems for x1, x2, and x3, starting at the very bottom. I have negative 10x3 equals 5. So dividing by negative 10, I have x3 equals negative 1 half. And then I can substitute that into my, my second equation here. Substitute the negative 1 half in. And then once I simplify and solve for x2, I get that x2 is positive 1 half. And then I substitute both of those into my top equation here. Um, and then once I simplify, I get that x1 equals 1. So this is what my solution ends up being. And if I wanted to write it as a vector, I would get that my vector x is 1, 1 half, negative 1 half. Okay. That's how you would solve that system. So I told you the, the process of value factorization to solve an equation is a long process. But it's not really meant for humans. It's meant more for computers. Computers can do this way more efficiently than, than the normal way of solving matrix systems. Um, so that's re really where it shines. Okay, there's LU factorization. So uh, thank you all for joining me. Let me go ahead and clear this off. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, my name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. So if you want more information about the various tutoring services we have on all four campuses and online, please go ahead and check out that top link, tutoring.asu.edu. If you want more videos like this that go over specific concepts in your course, or maybe you wanna see what upcoming review sessions we have for your exams, you can go ahead and check that bottom link out. Um, so thank you all again for joining me and have a fantastic day.